Welcome to the NFL Week 4 show of the Daily Fantasy Sports, where we will give you the best value picks for the week for DraftKings and for um, FanDuel. We will give you the best stacking options for tournament pool play, and we'll introduce an exciting new contest that's DFS-based. It's a survivor pool contest where you can win $100 free to enter. Coming up next. Hi, everyone. I'm Gary Kurtzman. And I'm Eric Lee. We are the Fantasy Football Consultants. And Gary, we're at week four, and this is pretty exciting because we've got a brand new contest, which will be fun for the viewers to participate in our YouTube comments. As well, we'll, get, we'll be able to provide you some great value plays, whether you play FanDuel or whether you play DraftKings. So, let's talk about this contest. The way it I, worked, I'm excited about it, Eric. This is going to be fun. The way it worked is we each picked five uh, players mm -hmm. uh, and right. our restrictions was for me on FanDuel because FanDuel's total budget is sixty thousand uh, dollars for nine players. We said we're going to take half of that, so I only could spend thirty thousand dollars to pick five positions: a quarterback, a running back, a wide receiver, a tight end, and a defense. And I get to pick twenty-five thousand because that's that's essentially half of the DraftKings budget uh, for those same positions. Gary, I think there's a myth out there because there's a lot of expectations for Sean, Sean Watson. I mean, he, most people had him as their first, second, or third overall quarterback. Yep. Um, and he had a really bad week one. But after that, he's been great. In, the, in week two and three, he's averaged 350 yards in the air, averaged two touchdowns a game, and he's averaged five carries for 40 yards. So you're worried about the, his knees? He's running. The only thing he hasn't done is run it into the end zone. I think that that may well happen this week. He's going up against the Colts, an average team at best on defense. So Deshaun Watson is my QB. Solid pick. In fact, didn't have Will Ford in week one, which I think had something to do with it. Solid yeah. pick. All right. Thank you. Uh, Chris, Chris Carson is my running back. And I'm a big Seahawk fan that you guys should know by now. And trust me, the Seahawks want to run the ball. The problem is they're not a very good team, so game script has denoted that they have to end up passing to catch up. That shouldn't be a problem this week. They play probably the worst team in the NFL, at least one of the worst teams in the NFL, in the Arizona Cardinals. Besides that, Arizona's defense, specifically their rushing defense, is absolutely terrible. It's 29th ranked in the NFL. Um, so expect the Seahawks to run. Now I hear what you're saying. What about Rashard Penny? Did you pay attention to last week? <laughs> Carson outrushed him 32 to three. Uh, so I feel really confident with uh, Chris Carson. I, you know, I was a math major. I like me some patterns. You had Carson featured in week one. Then you had Penny <laughs> featured in week two. Then you had Carson featured in week three. Who's it going to be, Eric? Can I get a penny for your thoughts on that one? Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be Carson. Ah, it's too dicey for me. It's going to be too Carson. Dicey. Why? They actually won in week three. <laughs> so we will see. Uh, my wide receiver is Sterling Shepard. Oh, I'm very excited about this pick and surprised that he's such a value on FanDuel. Um, look, he faces the Saints. Yes, the Saints, the New Orleans Saints in that 30th ranked defense. In fact, the only thing that has been really good about their defense is their cornerback, Marshawn Latimer. And what he does is he focuses on the number one wide receiver on the New York Giants, and that'll be Odell Beckham Jr. For example, what happened last week? He more or less shut down Julio Jones. Calvin Ridley went nuts. Three touchdowns and a whole bunch of yards. So I really like Sterling Shepard to go off, especially since it's very likely, almost a sure thing, that um, their tight end, Evan, Evan Ingram. Ingram, is not going to play. Yep. Opens up more opportunities for Shepard. Yeah, that's right. Shepard's slot routes are virtually mimicking what Evan Ingram's routes are going to be. That is an incredibly solid value pick. Okay, Trey Burton is next. Uh, you know, Trey Burton plays for the Chicago Bears, and I've watched a bunch of the Bears this year. Let me be clear with you. The Bears want to run the ball. <laughs> they rather the ball be in the hands of Jordan Howard and Tariq Cohen than Mitch Trubinsky. Uh, and I understand that, which, which devalues um, Trey Burton. But here's the deal. 
They play the Tampa Bay Bucks. The Tampa Bay Bucks rush defense is really good. They're number three uh, against the, the rush so far this year, but they're 31st against the pass. So I actually think Chicago will throw the ball, and one of their key targets is going to be Trey Burton. And finally, on defense, my defense is going to be uh, the Houston Texans. Now I'm going to be honest, Gary. <laughs> the, I, a bit I, of a risk, I, Gary. I ran out of money. <laughs> it's a bit of a risk. I ran out of money, <laughs> and I wanted another defense. But I'm okay with uh, the Texans because they play the Colts, and the Colts throw the ball a lot with Andrew Luck. And Andrew Luck has a tendency to take sacks. He has a tendency to make mistakes. What you want in, the, in a fantasy defense is to play a team that throws the ball. Uh, and that's the Colts, so I'm going with Houston. So, I'm sorry. Ah, uh, that sounds merciless there. So let me... let me luck with that. Let me review my picks, <laughs> and you can see all of their cost on FanDuel. Uh, that is Deshaun Watson at quarterback, Chris Carson at running back, Sterling Shepard at wide receiver, Trey Burton at tight end, and the defense is the Houston Texans. That's Team Eric, and who are they going to go up against? Okay, here is my all-star value lineup for DraftKings. So each of these players, I think, are an excellent value with their position. And here we go, a quarterback. Uh, your QB6, Tampa Bay's own Ryan Fitzpatrick, who cost you $6,200. Eric, he's been QB1 all year. He's thrown for more than 400 yards for three consecutive games. He is quite literally all the presses on Pat Mahomes, Pat Mahomes, Pat Mahomes. I get it. Pat Mahomes is a great player. Don't get me wrong. Fitzpatrick's been better. Fitzpatrick has literally been the best NFL quarterback through week three, and he's still not yet priced. He was like QB 13 in week one, like QB 10 in week two. Now he's up to QB 6. He, did, he keeps inching closer to what he should be, which is a top three quarterback. That's what he is in real life. Look, here's the deal. Tampa Bay throws more in the red zone than any other team. They're the most, most unbalanced team, pass versus rush, as any other team. Man, I'm telling you, this guy is a huge value. Now, don't worry about Jameis Winston, folks. They are not going to pull Fitzpatrick on the first week that Winston is back. Save those thoughts. Sleep well at night. Pick Fitzpatrick. Um, Gary, Fitzpatrick has been incredible this year. But do you ever wonder? What if this is as good as it Going up against that Bear defense, uh, does it bother you at all? The Bears secondary is horrible. The only thing good about the Bears <laughs> is the pass rush, and the number one containing team against the pass rush is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Love the way you set me up on that one, Kyle. All right. Okay, Carlos Hyde is, I think, the best value at running back. He's running back 15, folks. He's only going to cost you $5,500. Why do I like him? Two words, Baker Mayfield. Did you see what happened when Mayfield took over the reins in the uh, second quarter last game, uh, you know, when Tyler Taylor went down with a concussion? Here's the deal. It completely opened up the offense. He was slinging it downfield, not so much to Callaway. He needs to do more of that, but definitely to Jarvis Landry. And it just opened things up for Carlos Hyde. He got nearly 150 all-purpose yards in a game that was started by Tyrod Taylor, for God's sakes. I, I love the talent. Nobody disputes the talent. He was an incredible pass catching and rushing, uh, you know, running back for the Niners for those few years. He's just as talented now for Cleveland, only he has a better quarterback and better receivers. I, I just, I love this guy at RB15. I honestly think he is a top 10 running back this week. Um, especially I, against Chicago. Well, they, they play the Raiders. I love this game. They play the Raiders. Especially against, but, uh, yeah. But I like your pick, Gary, because, um, you know, Cleveland's better than we, we thought at the, the beginning of the year. And I think we were more worried about competition from Nick Chubb or, or, or someone else. But look at Carl Hyde has established uh, himself as the, the, yep. the, the key back. And, uh, and since Cleveland's a better team, they're going to be ahead more. And I think that they'll be ahead against the Raiders, at Absolutely. least in the game. Duke Johnson, insignificant. Nick Chubb, three carries. Nothing to worry about there. Lots of running when they get ahead against the Raiders, too. Your wide receiver value. Now, admittedly, this one, if I were to say that any one of these five are a stretch, it would be coming up right now. Chris Hogan is your wide receiver. Remember, I do have a monetary constraint, but I, I still like this guy's value at 5,800. He's wide receiver 17. This is the last week, folks. This is the last week where you have Chris Hogan without Julian Edelman, and without uh, a, Josh, he'll Gordon. Josh Gordon, but without a Josh Gordon who's played mm. any downs at all for the, for the New England Patriots. Josh Gordon 
he's had one week to learn the offense. The dude's going to be on a pitch count. No Julian Edelman. You know where all the targets are going to be going. They're going to be going to Chris Hogan. And you just have to ask yourself, can Tom Brady be this bad for three games in a row? I say no. Especially I say no against Miami that just lost their top safety. So now the secondary is compromised. They only had average corners to begin with. Right? I mean, the Raiders were spreading the ball around like crazy last week against them, and that's the Raiders. What do you think Tom Brady can do? I think for a home game against a division rival, New England's going to get up for this game. They understand their opponents. They have a weaker secondary, and, man, they are going to be pumped. I'm going to bet on Tom Brady. If you bet on Tom Brady, you're betting on Chris Hogan. I like the bet. I like it. Uh, tight end, O.J. Howard. This guy, folks, is going to be a top-five tight end all year long. Bank on it. Why? Because, man, do they have other weapons to throw to that clears out downfield. That's Chris Godwin. That's Mike Evans. He leaves the middle wide open for O.J. Howard, who is built to run the seam route, basically just like Travis Kelsey. They have just a tremendous offense all of a sudden. If it's not Fitzpatrick, it's Winston. Either way, man, these guys are in a terrific situation. The, the offensive line for Tampa Bay is the best in the NFL at blocking for the quarterback, clean pockets. It, you know, it leads to, to the looking at the wide receiver one, wide receiver two, then looking at the tight end. They get all the check downs. O.J. Howard is literally built to be a top five tight end. And yet, what? He's priced at tight end $11, $3,500. It's one of those things. DraftKings still hasn't caught up to the actual value in real life. Uh, I think you take that value and you run with it all day long. Who do you got at defense? I got me the Chargers. <laughs> the Chargers. Why? Because they're home versus San Francisco. The Garoppolo less. San Francisco 49ers. Don't forget, they were the second worst team in the NFL without Garoppolo last year. It ain't going to be a whole lot different this year. Now, I'll tell you, I like me Shanahan and I like the innovation he can bring. But don't forget, they had Shanahan last year too and they were the bottom two Cleveland was the only team that was worse without Garoppolo. Um, I don't see any of that changing, and they've only had a week to prepare. So, honestly, I think the Chargers that have a top-10 defense anyway feast on the Niners. Um, And, by the way, you're paying up for them. They are the number two rated defense. They're the number two rated defense for a reason worth the money. All right, so what's your entire team? Entire team is Ryan Fitzpatrick. At quarterback, running back Carlos Hyde, wide receiver Chris Hogan, tight end O.J. Howard, your defense, the Los Angeles, still feels weird to say that, Chargers. <laughs> All right, it's Team Gary against Team Eric. So Absolutely. this is the uh, video. Go into the YouTube comments and type in whether you're going to back Team Gary or Team Eric. You know what to do, folks. (laughs) So, um, you know, and 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 feel free to put in your reasons why if you want to throw it in there. Um, If we're going to total up the fantasy points, which are based on um, Yahoo's official scoring, that's half point PPR. Everything else is pretty standard. Uh, No milestone scoring. Uh, So pick the the team you think is going to score the most, and uh, we'll check out whether you survive to next week. If you back the wrong team, you're eliminated. So, Eric, let's talk a little bit about stackability for those tournament plays. I think a great stacking option here, Baker Mayfield, Josh Landry, and Antonio Callaway. Why? Because Baker Mayfield has huge potential. That's why he was the first pick. He slings it down the field. He takes chances. He may get intercepted, but he's a gunslinger. We're going to see some long touchdowns, and you're going to see him to Callaway and Landry because basically that's the only people that he throws to. They totaled 25 targets last game. That's huge opportunity. And it's against Oakland, who is a terrible bottom five pass defense. Love me, that stackability. Uh, and I like Antonio Callaway as like a real value pick on FanDuel, who's only 4,200. And it's amazing if you put Callaway how you can fill out the rest of your lineup. My stack is uh, going to be, uh, let's see, I love Cincinnati uh, this week. They've been, their passing game has gone off. You have a situation where I would go with Andy Dalton to uh, Tyler Boyd. There's a chance A.J. Green doesn't play. If he does, this is a good stack. If he doesn't, it may even be a great stack. So those are the key things we want you to focus on for week four of the DFS. We wish you the best in your DFS play, and we wish you best in our pool. So get in those comments uh, and make sure they're in before the game starts. 
So, uh, and if you haven't yet, because you have to do this to be eligible for the contest, be sure to click the red button, uh, making yourself a subscriber, click the red subscriber button, and then the bell icon, so you can be notified of our whole, all, the rest of our videos. And until next time, we will see you in the next video. See you then.